<laughs> yeah, that's all I can. Actually, we went and saw the, the other ballet that they came out and did was Romeo and Juliet. And there was a very famous, when they made that movie, the Capio's movie, there was yep. a very famous TV commentator when they came out and said, I was so sad when she died in the end. And she was in the queue saying, oh, thanks, and thanks, thanks for telling me how it is. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> um, this is, uh, it's a story that, uh, it's actually, it's called The Gift. I'm not trying, I've got CDs out. Uh, but it was actually the title for my last CD that I did. And it wasn't going to be the title because we'd already mm -hmm. set to put out the mm -hmm. CD and it was going to be called Don't Forget Me Cobble, which is actually about the battle from Mel. Had everything done, we had the, we had the colours designed, the whole box. And I was working, I was just about finished work about five o'clock in the morning. I was listening to Talkback Radio and uh, this woman came along with the story and I came home and I wrote this poem and my wife said, you know, she said, that's got to, well, she said, that's got to go on the CD. I said, fine, okay. She said, and we're going to have to change the cover. So we changed the cover so it looked like a, a gift. And it's actually, it was Mother's Day morning that I actually heard this poem and it's a true story. My shift was nearly over. I'd soon be on my way. The eastern sky would herald in another Mother's Day. I tuned into a talkback show as the dawn did slowly creep. The switchboard seemed to be jam-packed with women who could not sleep. The subjects seemed to focus on the strange gifts they had received. And some of these weird presents just couldn't be believed. Lawn mowers and spanner sets might be the choice for some, but I find them inappropriate for that special mum. When it comes to showing gratitude, you may pay out great amounts, but when it's all said and done, it's the thought that truly counts. For the smallest token from one's heart, made with loving care, is often the true reflection of the love that you both share. Then her voice came on the airway free of other scribes, with a soft and gentle accent from the land of stars and stripes. I listened on intently to the story that she weaved, as she told us of the special gift that she had once received. A little pair of earrings, shaped like two butterflies. The simple proof of her son's love brought tears to his mother's eyes. He'd left the price tag on, and she felt a little sad as she realised her five-year-old had spent every cent he had. She wore them every Mother's Day, and you could always tell. When her son was in the limelight, she wore them then as well. She wore them when he went to war, and shed such bitter tears, when she got that dreaded call that every parent fears. Like his mates who went before him, he passed with no regret, cut down in Afghanistan by a foe he never met. Though the world was at his feet the day that he was born, when it comes to politics, a soldier is just a pawn. In a flag draped coffin, he came home from the fray, and she buried him in Arlington, where her nation's heroes lay. She sat there, broken hearted, feeling so bereft. Her memories and his butterflies were all that she had left. Those tiny pair of earrings are now worth more than gold. And this grown man was moved to tears by the story that she told. I drove home quietly thinking, with a heart that seemed like lead, silently reflecting on every word she'd said. When I arrived, I gazed upon the photos on the wall of my children in their uniforms, standing proud and tall. And I prayed to God in heaven, please grant me this one goal that I may never have to pay that grieving mother's toll. Mm. Yeah.